So let me show you how to set up your Xbox Series S. First, let's start off with everything that you're gonna need, which is everything inside of the box. You're gonna need an Xbox Series S, of course. You're also going to need a high-speed HDMI cable, which this one comes with. That's pretty important to get the best resolution and frame rates possible. You're also gonna need the power cable, and you're gonna need a controller, and it's gonna come with two AA batteries as well too. So simple packaging, not a whole lot is gonna come with it here. You're not gonna need a whole lot either. Now let's take a look around the system itself. If you look at the front, there is no disc port, none. None whatsoever. This is an all digital console, so you're not gonna be using any physical based media here with this. Anything you're gonna do needs to be streamed or downloaded with the Series S. Now you do get one USB port on the front of it. You also have the sync button right at the top there for your controllers. On the back is where all the action is, of course. You have an ethernet port. You also have two more USB ports. You have an HDMI out, and you also have a storage expansion slot. Now, let me explain what that is here. So the Xbox Series S has 512 gigabytes of SSD storage built into it. However, if you want to expand that storage, you can. Now, if you want to expand the storage just to play more of your older games, you can just use external USB storage. That should be fine. Any Xbox One, Xbox 360 game can play off the internal and the USB storage as well too. However, if you want to expand the storage for games that are gonna be Xbox Series X or S, in this case, enhanced or meant for the console, you're going to need to get the specific storage cards for it, which aren't the cheapest right now, but it's plug and play. and You'll instantly be able to boost the storage that way and take advantage of it. It's called the Xbox Velocity Architect texture so those are proprietary cards dedicated for that there'll be some other third party ones coming down the line but that's what that sort of expansion card slot is for so just keep that in mind and next to that we obviously have the power as well too now let's get everything plugged up now in this setup i'm actually going to plug this basically into my monitor to sit it right underneath my uh right underneath my right underneath there on my desk right here so all i'm going to plug in is my hdmi and my power, and I'm actually gonna use this for wireless instead of wired, what I did with the Xbox Series S. So let's get this all connected up here and move on to the next step, setting up an Xbox Series S. All right, we have our Xbox Series S plugged up here to the monitor, connected and ready to go. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually set it up on our smartphone here to get everything going. So you need to make sure you download the Xbox application on your phone, Android or iOS. And if you haven't signed in for the first time, it's gonna have set up console already there. If not, you can. if you're already signed in, you need to go to your library. You need to go and make sure you tap on consoles and then you wanna to go to where it says set up, con set up a console. We'll tap on that here. If you wanna set up a new console with that. And now we have to uh, type in what's on the TV or on the monitor right here, this code to get things set up. So we'll go ahead and do that. C A I Z M Z H Q B G O. And we'll hit connect the console. So that should be able to find it get everything connected up there we go we have connected we're gonna go ahead and hit next and then we're gonna you know choose our language console language is gonna be English for us in the United States location United States we'll hit next we on a default now we're gonna either use a wired or wireless connection I'm actually gonna set this up via wireless this go around give it just a second here to connect up and most likely once we connect it's definitely gonna probably be some updates we're gonna need to download to the console too all right, console's online and connected. We're going to hit next. Let's update. The console needs a 793 megabyte uh, update, which will download over the connection. It will take a few minutes, but it's worth it. Well, the only way you can get your system going. So let's go ahead and next. While we allow the system to go do the update, it's gonna access to choose a power mode between energy saving and instant on. Instant on gives you the fastest startup, you play and install and manage from your device. It basically kind of keeps it on in a low powered state when you're not playing and allows you to connect and do things to it. If you want an energy savings where it's just basically, just basically off, you can choose that. We'll go for instant on because we want the speed here. Uh, sign in security preferences. This is basically how you want to be signed in and authorized for purchases. What do you want to do on this Xbox? Do you want just to be signed in completely, ask for a pass key before signing in or lock it down. All depends what you want with that. We'll go ahead and hit no barriers for ourselves. Do you want to be able to automatically sign in with enable instant sign in? Makes sense for us. Keep my games and apps up to date so it'll automatically keep things up to date in the background. Go ahead and do that. Do we want to turn on remote features, which allows you to install games remotely? So basically you can open up the app in here or on your PC, install the game remotely from that over to the console. It'll be ready for you whenever you're ready to play on the console. You can use remote play, 
turn on and you control your console. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And let's get you signed into the Xbox profile. We should just take a quick second to do. This explains how you use your data. Um, we don't want to send any optional data for now. We'll go ahead and next. Uh, we'll give our console a name here. Uh, give it a fancy name. I guess, uh, you know what, desktop Xbox. It's just sitting here on my, on my desk, so we'll call it that. Desktop Xbox Series S, I guess. That's the fanciest we're gonna get. All right, do you wanna keep in touch with info and offers and advertising? Basically, just send you stuff from publishers if you wanna do that. All right, do you wanna copy settings from another Xbox? No, we're gonna start fresh this go around all done and so we're set up here and pretty much completed on the phone but we have to wait for the update to finish here on a mobile device on our site on our desktop here which will still take a few minutes it's going to do a couple of reboots during that process so let's go ahead and let that run and we'll skip to where we're already at the next stage and finishing up the setup process all right the update completed here and now we're at the point where we kind of probably need to update our controller so we're going to go and hit update controller it's going to check apply the update it's going to maybe do that wirelessly so just keep the controller motionless and turned on as he said here so let's just keep it nice and still we'll lay it down let it do the update and once that's completed we'll head over to the next step okay we have the controller updated here we're going to hit next i'll find the best tv or display settings here it looks like display is both advanced video features let's enable them to make sure your xbox is great on this tv this is going to be interesting because i'm doing this through my capture card and i have a 21 by 9 ultra wide monitor i have this connected to so Let's see how well this works out. It's going to be interesting. Let's see what we have here. We can go back or keep the display at 4K. Um, we'll keep it at this resolution. That's fine. All right. Let's go. We're all done here. Nice. Let's go ahead and take us home. And here we are on the main page. I don't have much on here just yet. Let's wait for all this to load up. But yep, we're here on the main page of the brand new Xbox interface. Pretty cool, nice, slick. I shouldn't say brand new, it looks very similar to the uh, original interface uh, before as well, but we will do a deep dive into that interface coming up so, soon enough here. It's similar to what we did with the PS5 most recently. But here we are in the Series S. Let's go ahead and hop in and I wanna check one thing and that'd be the storage options. Let's take a look here and see how much storage we have. Account, system, storage. All right, so it does come with 512 gigabytes built in, but it looks like you have about roughly 362.1 gigabytes free of 364 gigabytes in total. You can view content here, it tells you what sort of on and what we manage. Like I said, we'll go through all this stuff coming up real soon on sort of our Xbox UI overview coming up in the near future. But we can also add storage to this, of course, as well, using USB external storage and using those storage cards to expand the Xbox Velocity Architecture storage for the more advanced Series X and S games when that comes down the line here. So um, let me see, we'll head back here to the home screen. It looks like some of my games and apps have also kind of downloaded here as well too. But we will soon be doing a video on sh kind of showing you how to transfer your data from your Xbox One or Xbox One X or Xbox One S, depending on which one you have, over to the new Series X. I'll put up the video that covers right now the Xbox Series, uh, Xbox One X to the One S that I have up right now. This is pretty much gonna work the same way, but we are gonna redo that video with the Series X and an Xbox one x instead so many xbox and x and that's too many letters going on here um we'll also if you haven't checked it out yet speaking of the series x check out our setup of that as well too we did something similar with this over with the xbox series s that we've done here and as always thanks for watching